Well, this morning on Today's Health, the captain of the Enterprise and tinnitus. William Shatner is boldly gone where many men have gone before to a place no one wants to be. He suffers from tinnitus, a constant ringing in the ears or head noise that simply won't go away. Our man in Hollywood, Jim Brown, sat down with the star to talk about his mission to help other sufferers. It is a humorous moment in Star Trek IV when the Enterprise crew travels back to the 20th century. William Shatner's Captain Kirk reacts negatively to the deafening noise of a punk rocker's boombox. It was 1986. A few years later, it was not so funny when Shatner began hearing noises where there were none. I remember having a surge of um, panic. And that moment of panic, when I realized that I was hearing something inside my head, I wanted to run and escape the sound. And that only increased the panic because there was no place to run. Shatner, a man who spends more time on a horse than he ever did on the bridge of the Enterprise, learned that he, like millions of Americans, suffered from tinnitus due to the permanent destruction of the nerve cells of the inner ear. What do you hear then if, if I'm hearing all the time. When Shatner revealed his hearing problem to friends like Leonard Nimoy, he found not only a sympathetic ear, but another tinnitus sufferer as well. They compared notes on what may have caused the damage. We were both standing uh, around a, an explosive device uh, on a Star Trek film and it, uh, and it prepared and went off. And I guess I must have been standing here because I have it in my left ear and he has it in his right ear. The volume of sound is not so important as your ability to accept it and, and not, not panic. But you didn't accept it, did you? Not in the beginning. Uh, I, I thought I would go um, crazy. To the point that you actually were contemplating suicide. <clears throat> there was a time um, when I thought, I don't think I can deal with this anymore. And I began to actively think of what means could you use that, um, that you could end your life. What changed things? What, you said you can't cure it, but you can help it in some way. I thought, this has got to be positive. I've got to tr do something about this. And so I went on uh, a journey of trying to do something about it uh, and met a lot of people along the way and ended up in Baltimore. And there, at the University of Maryland Medical Center under doctors such as Paul Jastroboff and Douglas Maddox, Shatner was treated using a device resembling a hearing aid, which feeds so-called white sound into the ear. And eventually what happens is the brain says, oh, I, I know this sound, and uh, I, I ignore that sound, and uh, says the brain, and that teaches your head to accept the sound of the tinnitus. Uh, the real message here for me to you and to your audience is that although most doctors will tell a, their patient who comes into them with this complaint that there's no help, there is help. There is hope. Dr. Steven Nagler is a surgeon who's one of the 50 million people who suffers from tinnitus. He now helps others as director of the Southeastern Comprehensive Tinnitus Clinic, which just opened in Atlanta. Dr. Nagler, good morning. Good morning. First of all, it can be tinnitus or tinnitus. Either is correct. It really Either doesn't matter. Either pronunciation is acceptable. That's right. What exactly is it? We hear about this ringing in the ears, but what exactly is happening inside the head? Tinnitus is the experience of noise or sound either coming from the ear or coming from the head as opposed to coming from an external source. It's a physical phenomenon that is not a psychological issue. It affects about 40 to 50 million Americans, about 15 percent of the population, um, and it can be, it can have various um, um, degrees of severity from mildly irritating to totally incapacitating. About six million Americans have it to the extent that they, um, that they are, they don't function well at times. Can't sleep. Um, can't sleep, they're irritated. Um, about two million are actually uh, disabled. 
William Shatner tried to, within his microphone, tell us what sound he's hearing. I'm sure the sound differs slightly for all different people. Give us an example using this device, what a tinnitus sufferer might hear. And is that at about the volume they would hear it? It varies from person. It varies from person to person, but when you hear that sound, what you want to do is either leave the room or put your hands over your ears. When a tinnitus sufferer hears that sound, he leaves the room, the sound travels with him, he puts his hands over his ears, the sound gets louder. There's no escape. So this can develop at any time in one's life. Is it injury related at all? It is somewhat related. There, there are several possible causes, but the most uh, common cause is noise-induced tinnitus. What happens is um, a disorder or disarray uh, develops in the cochlea, um, which is right over here, the snail-like structure in the uh, hair cells in the, in the inner ear. And then at some point, and this is Dr. Jasterboff's big contribution, and many people uh, um, believe that at some point the tinnitus signal travels actually into the brain to the limbic system, which sits in here near the medial temporal lobe of the brain. And the limbic system is the seat of various emotions, love, hate, and fear. The limbic system sees the tinnitus as an unwelcome, threatening intruder. It grabs it and it won't let go. William Shatner mentioned that there is help available. You can't cure this. And without getting into specific treatments, what should someone do if they, if he or she feels that he does have tinnitus? Four things. And it's simple. Quickly. The first thing, quickly, the first thing is to find a board certified ENT doctor or an otologist near doctor who's interested in tinnitus. So you won't wind up with this story, go home and learn to live with it. We don't need that anymore. Uh, it's inappropriate, unacceptable. The second thing is to join the American Tinnitus Association in Portland, Oregon. Very, very important. You get flooded with information and data. The third thing um, is to protect your auditory system. Tinnitus doesn't cause uh, hearing loss. Hearing loss doesn't cause tinnitus, but as your hearing uh, um, gets worse, tinnitus becomes more apparent. So the two things to do in that regard are to avoid silence, sound is good for the auditory system, and avoid loud noises, protect yourself from loud noises. And the fourth thing to do is write to your congressman, we need money, we need money so that I'm out of a job. We need a cure. Dr. All we have is very good treatment, but we don't have a cure. Dr. Stephen Nagler, thanks very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. By the way, if you'd like to know more about tinnitus, you can call the American Tinnitus Association. The number is one 800 634 8978.